think of the British hip hop of the 80s and 90s. Lots of stars. You might not automatically think of the female stars. Now, a BBC documentary wants to set the record straight by highlighting the first ladies of hip hop who helped make some of its most memorable music. Lisa Mafia from So Solid Crew and Betty Boo both feature in the series. Good morning to Good you both. Lisa Mafia and Betty Boo, hello. <laughs> um, I was just saying, just as um, Betty came in, I was just saying, I can't remember, I remember all the words oh, to, to your raps because <laughs> it was my, it was absolutely my yeah, time. Oh, and I've been watching this um, three part series, yeah. it's fascinating. I've seen the first episode and I find it really interesting how women have, were perceived mm. then. And it wasn't as, it was tough, mm. but they were accepted if they were good. It felt as if there was quite a meritocracy, at least in the United States. Mm. Lisa, what was it like here, bearing in mind Betty had kind of paved the way mm. as so mm. many had? Mm. I just felt that I didn't really experience objectification until after I left So Solid went solo. It was only then that, you know, they kind of, it was, London was, well, the industry was renowned for making you sort of expose yourself a little bit more to get that bigger spread in the newspaper. But I found that it was until I went solo that I experienced that because I had all the boys behind me, you know? And so with selling my music, after then, I decided to go into business more so, so that I had more to look at. So they had more to look at rather right. than my body. Well, there's lots of positive things to talk about yeah. in relation to the music and whatever. Just on that thought, mm. what was the worst of the times of the pressure that was put on you in, in a like ma that male-dominated world? What was the worst? You know, what was the point where you're going, really? Really? Am I really yeah. You know, is this really happening? It's, it's every time you go to talk about your music that they you, to get the bigger spread, you had to sort of expose yourself in the ways that I didn't feel. I'm very boyishly carved. I am a tomboy through and through. And to get that hot spot, it was to more... To be clear, people like, are saying to you, wear less wear clothes. Wear less clothes That's to get that middle face spread. Yeah. And, and it, it was that at that point I decided to go into business. I opened my own agency. I opened my own in, interior design company. And now recently, more recently, I've, I've started my own rum brand, Mafia Rum. And, and for all of those things, I've given now something else for them to look at. Because before it was all about what you what you actually look like, it, but I've got more for them to talk about by doing business. In some ways, it's quite disappointing that yeah. Lisa, you know, had to go mm -hmm. that route and mm -hmm. leave the music because she was being objectified. What was it like for you? Because you were one of the early <laughs> rapping stars. Um, I found it, it was a really great outlet for me to express myself. And um, when I was 15, I discovered salt and pepper and uh, yes. it was all yeah. over <laughs> from then, you know. I wanted to be them. And, you know, I was half Malaysian, half Scottish. And, you know, in, back in the 80s, nobody really looked like me. Even though I look quite European now, I was very different looking. You know, so let's, <laughs> let's imagine you as a young girl rapping, mm. would you say half Malaysian, half Scottish, <laughs> yeah. um, just walking past McDonald's. Mm. And who do you see in McDonald's <laughs> but Public Enemy, yeah. right? One yeah. of the biggest <laughs> rap groups ever, right? <laughs> And you're, you're, you're a young person, and if you see public, you see one of your stars in McDonald's these days, you're like, oh my God, do oh I go God. in? Do I, do I talk <laughs> to them? Yeah. Betty Boo goes oh. in and raps to them. <laughs> Take a look. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you have some kahunas to do that, yeah. I think. You've also oh got the giggles there. And the giggles. So yeah. you've got to tell us what's happening here. How old were you? Um, I think I was 17. Wow. I was definitely 17, yeah. And, uh, yeah, we were just walking past the McDonald's and saw them with the S1Ws. I mean, on stage, they're really radical and quite yeah. scary figures. Mm. But we just couldn't believe we saw these titans of rap in our local McDonald's. <laughs> and so what did you, you walked in and you just went up to them? Yeah, I went, oi, oi. oi. <laughs> did you really? <laughs> what with the oi? <laughs> and what oh, did they say? You? We, you were great. Um, and they went, oh, you're obviously rappers. And he said, come and spit 16, you know, so... Uh, and like, OK. <laughs> and, then, and then Griff started beatboxing and uh, I just thought, oh, all right, I'll do it. And then... That's what happened. And what did they say when they you went? They went awesome. Um, we want to produce your records, <gasps> and uh, yeah, so we did that. Went on tour with them. Um, yeah, so it was Just a great like thing. That. Yeah. Well, in this documentary, uh, what 
What do the men who were involved in those days say about the way that women were treated? So for me, like I said, I was one of the lucky ones. I was surrounded by talented men that were a force in the industry. So I had their backing. But it, as I said, I did, they were always, like, pushing me and, and encouraging me to be confident within me and my talent. But it was the, beyond that, it was the media. It's the that industry. Cut, yeah, it's mm. the actual industry that sort of brought you back to say, well, if you want the middle page spread, we're going to have to do something about that. It's quite interesting, isn't it? Because I think you, you look at that world, you can look at that rapidly, and it's like you said about Public Enemy, they're mm. big, they're large, mm -hmm. they look scary on mm. stage. But it's an image that's projected that mm. is actually not really reflective of how supportive the men particularly are of the rising stars of, of mm. women, even way back in... New York, when it when it all started, yeah. you hear. I think it's Debbie D says she goes in, she goes to rap, and if mm. she was good, they were like, "Come on in." Yeah. yeah well, this is it. You had to prove, show and prove. Which is not. There's nothing wrong with that. No, there's no. nothing wrong with that. And I, when I started making my own records, I knew that I had to write and produce my own records, in order to feel that I was going to be accepted. I suppose. Um, but it's worked out okay for me, so it's all right. <laughs> How's it evolved now? Do you think Betty Hip Hop? How it worked? Since, since those days, we've seen some of the earlier mm. uh, earlier videos then. I think it's come a long way for females, definitely. I think girls are running things right now, don't you think, Lisa? I, I do, <laughs> and it's just so refreshing to see women working together. There's mm. been Miss Banks, Steph London, KTB, Miss Dynamite. Mm. There's been great collaborations, and I think that's important for us to uphold and, and sort of raise each other up and empower each other in the industry to get further. And also, less of that what you were referring to, yeah. they can be themselves. They yeah. can dress how they want, mm -hmm. have any image they want, because mm -hmm. it's the music yes. that matters. And say what they want as well. It's social media, though. Mm. It's kind of put a stop to... We get. We have now got control of our, our own careers. Mm. We get to say what we want, when we want, because we mm. have direct access to our I don't say there are a lot of parallels here with almost all other <laughs> areas of music, aren't yeah. there? I'm, I'm, I'm sure if you looked at the rock... Yeah. Women in rock, they'd say the same thing. Go back, you know, 50 years yeah. and people, record industry would have been doing the same thing to them. Mm -hmm. There's a parallel across lots there of, is, don't mm -hmm. you think, genres. Yeah, there is. Mm -hmm. you, you said they can say what they want as mm -hmm. well. What was restricted before? Um, I think in my day it was all about party rocking lyrics, you know, um, whereas now the what rappers... Do you, what do you mean, party rocking lyrics? Well, <laughs> I was walking down the street just the other day, that kind of stuff. <laughs> Really light. I wanted you to carry on. Nasty rhyme, right? Yeah. But now it's pretty deep and um, e expressive. And mm. um... oh, so now, like social commentary is much more acceptable yeah. than mm. kind of like just rhyming or making sure that it was something that people could pick up on yeah. really mm. quickly. So mm -hmm. now it's that they're expressing what's going on well, around them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. much. Yeah. Well, that was the whole point, wasn't yes. it? It was the frustration of being in a certain time, in a certain economy, and not being recognised. Yeah, so that was the you form. You can express yourself. In, I mean, in the mid-'80s, when I was 15, you know, it was... There wasn't an outlet to express yourself, and mm. I found rap um, and hip-hop a way of um, finding my identity and becoming who I am today, and hip-hop still rules in my life, anyway. Do you know, a lot of people will love the uh, documentary. <laughs> it is good. Not least because of the music, you know. There, there's, there's, there'll be little memories that yes. are prompted by, you know, moments in time. Most thank definitely. You. Thank you. Yeah, it's, a, it's an excuse to watch powerful <laughs> women, so we've had two on the sofa, so thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Uh, the first two episodes of The First Ladies of Hip Hop will air on BBC Two tomorrow at 9.35 in the evening.